Yeah, so um, like Jan said, I am uh, the founder of Netsbekannt, which means translated known on the net. And um, I also run the language, a language website called Sprachheit, which has about 100,000 visitors, which is a side project of mine. And funny enough, I started to merge these two businesses because I started being approached by language companies that wanted me to do their SEO. And some more things developed from that. Uh, for instance, now I'm involved in, uh, we're doing the marketing for Expolingua, which is a language show here in Berlin, where we also do some influencer stuff. And um, I'm also helping out with uh, polyglot gathering and the online marketing. And at the moment, about one third of our clients are in the language uh, related, in language related businesses like translations agencies, language schools, language apps, which is really fun. So I can, uh, I can, I can have this, the interest in languages, I can also do it in my uh, daily SEO work. So uh, what is expecting you? First of all, I will give you a quick overview of Sprachheit and uh, I will do a little intro into SEO. Um, then I will uh, talk about the two main ranking factors in SEO, which are content and authority. And uh, then I have some tools for you and then I have some takeaways and I also have some homework for you. I hope you're all excited about that. So first of all, what is Sprachheit? I started this very similarly uh, to many others here. Um, like Oli, it's a language site that's about language learning. Um, it started as a blog, grew quite popular, and uh, the typical way of, of a language site like that is a video course, and then I started a Spanish course, so that's where I'm at now. So uh, we do, like, we have, uh, we test apps there, we, we do advice on, on general language learning, so all the things you expect from a language learning blog. And um, so first of all, disclaimer, because we're hearing about a lot of topics here, about Instagram, about Facebook, about SEO, and uh, unfortunately, it's not that now you have so many ideas and you go home and you do everything at once, and if you do that, then nothing will work. So. Uh, you have to decide what to do, and if you decide that Instagram is much more interesting, and Michelle did a much better job than I, then do that, but don't do like a little bit of SEO, a little bit of Instagram, a little bit of Facebook. It's what I realized uh, with my businesses is that you really, if, if you want to get successful in something, you have to focus on one topic. That could be SEO, that could be Instagram, that could be Facebook, <coughs> podcasting. Um, I think the, the best way to have success is to focus on one marketing strategy and uh, not try to do everything at once. So yeah, let's start with the success factors of Sprachheit and um, at the same time I will give you an intro into SEO and content marketing. So many of those things you've heard already give the best content that really helps and um, <coughs> that's what I did with Sprachheit. We have in German the probably the longest and best articles um, about language learning and I see many people taking pictures of the slides at the very end you will have a chance to download them I mean you can still take pictures but uh, if, if that's too much work at the end um, you don't even need to talk to me you can just download them so uh, it will be really easy um, yeah so we have I think like about 200 content pieces which are all pretty extensive like um, I think all of them are at least 1,000 words, and we have 2,000 words, 3,000 words. I think the longest is about 8,000 words or something. And um, I decided to do it in German because the English market was very crowded. And uh, like Lydia said, this worked very well. So I think if I would have started it in English, it would have been much more difficult. So you, it's always better to start in a niche. Um, so either it's about a language or you do it in your local language, so something where it's not as crowded. Because SEO works for, to, for have, to have a successful SEO, you have to be better than everything else. And if you're competing with everybody, then it's going to be really hard to be better than everybody else. So it, for, for me, it made a lot of sense to start in German, and I'm super happy about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we did a lot of content, and if you search for language-related topics in German, most of the time, uh, Sprache will pop up. And... Um, that happened because of two really important SEO concepts, which I will introduce in a minute, which are holistic content and uh, content hubs. Uh, but first, let's go into the most important uh, Google ranking factors. So Google 
says there's about 200 ranking factors and you can group them in about, so obviously they don't say which ones those are, but um, SEOs pretty much know more or less which ones those are and you can group them into three topics or actually, so two topics and one on top of that. So the first one is website optimization, which means like this is the groundwork. This is not something, uh, this is like, if you don't do that, then it's hard to do SEO. So if your website is really slow or doesn't look very good, um, you have to have SSL, it, it has to be attractive. So uh, people, even if you have the best content, but it's like you can't really read it well, then um, people will leave the page and Google knows that people will leave the page, Google knows everything. So um, if people leave, leave your page, then Google will say, okay, this is not relevant and then uh, you will not get ranked well. So the two main concepts are um, authority and um, content, online authority. So the content includes um, having the right keywords. So you create content for topics that people are actually looking for. So that's what Michelle was talking about, creating content for SEO. People are actually looking for answers to these questions. So you have to create content uh, with answers to those questions. Um, it's length, it's exhaust exhaustiveness. So you talk about a topic completely, like you, you, you don't just mention a, a few information here and there, but you actually talk about the topic in every possible way. So that's how the long articles appear. Um, the structure, so um, it's not 100 tips and then it's just a text, but it's like pictures, um, lists, videos, so that people are actually, can skim the content and that they, uh, that they interact with the content. And the second one is online authority. So, so those are the two things you have to remember. Um, content and online, and online authority, those are the two most important um, SEO factors. If you want to rank better, you have to good, have good online authority and you have to have good content that fits the keywords that you're trying to rank for. And online authority is brand searches, so how many people search for your brand. Backlinks, um, which used to be the most important factor, it's still the most important factor in online authority. It's starting to decline, but it's still very important to have good links from, from well-established sites. Um, it's social signals, do people share your uh, content, do people interact with your content. So it's, it's basically like it is also in the real world, like how authoritative are you um, in the marketplace. And what's important is the broader you are, the more you spread your authority. So if you blog in five languages and you blog about 100 languages, then Google will not exactly know what you're an authority on because you're trying to do everything. So the more niche down you are, the easier it is to build authority. So if you do French grammar, then it's much easier to build authority on that topic than it is um, to about all languages and all languages. So um, I know that many people are trying, like in the language uh, industry, everybody, all language bloggers like to blog in many different languages and uh, that's fun and everything, but it, it hurts your SEO. If you do it all in one language, then you will build much quicker good online authority and uh, Google will rank you better. So I have some percentages and this, uh, those percentages are how much time uh, out of like if you have 100 hours uh, to spend on SEO, then you should spend about 10% 10 10 of the time, 10 hours on optimization, on website optimization, 20% uh, on your online authority and 60% about content. So basically the big shift in SEO has been for the past few years, content marketing becomes more and more uh, important in SEO and uh, to, have a good, to have good content is, is the most important part of SEO. And uh, what's also very important about Google is, Google tries to have the best match between a search query and the first result. So basically Google wants to show the best result so people click on there and that they're satisfied. So obviously this happens by competitiveness. So the more competitive something is, the more difficult it is to get up. If you're in like a niche where nobody is and or they do just really bad stuff, then it's much easier to rank. So um, it's always in regards to competition because why should Google rank something better that is not better? So there is no, there are no, no SEO hacks like they used to be like buying millions of backlinks. So nowadays, if you want to rank better than what's on the first page, then you have to be better. And if you can't, then don't even try. try find other keywords where you can be better. That's, that's important. And um, 
content, there's two very important concepts in, in um, content marketing. The first one is holistic content, which means having like one huge article that regards, that looks at the topic very much in depth, that answers the question, um, that answers all the questions that are around that. And uh, the other one is a content hub, which means, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example in a second. So a content hub means you have a, you have a main article, which is how to learn French, and then you have sub-article, which is how to learn French grammar and French words, and you, you build, it's, it's a little bit like an authority hub, so you, 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 you create content on a, on a topic, and you, you create sub-content on the topic, and so on. Um, so so those, two, those two concepts are very important in content marketing. It's not that easy to build online authority, and it takes a long time, but with content, you can create that much easier. So if you have really good competitors that have a lot of authority, but they don't have as good content, then you can create a lot of good content to beat them, even if they're much more authoritative than you are. So uh, here's an example of a content hub that, we created a content hub for learning Spanish, because we have a Spanish course, and uh, so there's, there are a few keywords, we probably don't see them. Um, we rank now for most um, learn, for most topics around learning Spanish because uh, we have 15 articles about learning Spanish and this is the way it looks. So at the, the very top you have how to learn Spanish in general and then you have Spanish for kids, Spanish for beginners and then for Spanish grammar you have desde hace and uh, lots of other grammar topics. So we really had a look at all these topics and the important thing is that for every topic we have the most extensive article. So that's why I rank really well. Um, the learn Spanish keyword is very difficult because there is, that's a money keyword, people that, that are looking for, that are uh, Googling Spanish lernen or learn Spanish, they are usually much more inclined to buy something. So that's where all the big players are. And that's why it wouldn't have been enough to create a content, uh, to create a, an article about learning Spanish, so we had to pad it out with, with that content hub, and now we're, like, I think we're at, uh, currently at uh, 12th place, but we're getting up there, and I think in, within the next few months, we will also be on the first page to learn Spanish, uh, because we have this content hub. So, if you don't rank for a keyword, and the authority of your competitors are too high, create a content hub, do sub-articles, and then you can beat uh, your competitors, even if they have higher authority. Um, this is, yeah, this, uh, we have 20,000 20, visitors that are learning Spanish on our website. So we have about... Per month. Per month. Per month. So there's 100,000 visitors and 20,000 there are specifically for learning Spanish because of the Spanish content we created. So this is the, the hub. So um, every article is holistic. It has texts, videos, infographics, images, tables, exercises, downloads, and so on. So this is how you can beat the big players, even if you don't have as much authority. And uh, here's an example of holistic content. That's uh, the most successful article on, on Sprachheit, which is a comparison of vocabulary apps. And um, it has about 10,000 visitors per month. And uh, it ranks for about 750 different keywords. And it's huge. It has about 7,000 words. And it really looks at that topic in depth. It looks at uh, the, the best apps, and then we have the five best apps out of those uh, 12 or 13 advantages, disadvantages, and the, the problem, the big challenge with that such big articles is that nobody's gonna read the whole article. Everybody comes there to find something specific, maybe the best one or the best five or the advantages. So what's very important if you have big articles is to make sure that people can navigate them quickly. So at, at the, the very top, you have an overview, you have an index, so that you will see that on many uh, sites that have long articles, that you always have an index where you can navigate quickly. And um, yeah, there's lots of details, many images, screenshots, and we keep on updating it. And every time we update it, we see it uh, bump up again. Um, what's interesting, though, is um, longer is not always better. And we especially saw that with this article because we could have done like the 100 best apps 
or the thousand best apps, but nobody cares. People that are actually looking for, for a flashcard app, they want one app, but not the same app will be the best for everybody. So you need to, you need to um, show which app is, why is it good, for whom is it, is it good. We used to have 17 apps and we saw that it was getting listed worse and worse and uh, the competitors always had less and we, we started to delete some and um, it started to rank better again. So search intent is super important. What are people actually looking for? Because not every topic is, or not every keyword means that they want to have huge content. They, like some just want a quick solution or, um, or they would just want to buy a product or they, they don't want to read um, like lots and lots of, of text. They, they just, like for instance, for online shops, we're, we're not going to create a huge product page for online shops because people just want to buy the product. Um, so there you have to use other uh, ways to rank better. But especially in a language niche, um, usually people are looking for answers. And then for most uh, topics, it's uh, the longer the better. But um, always think about why is somebody looking for something. And uh, the one that satisfies the user intent the best, that's the one that, that gets ranked the best. So yeah, uh, we, we improved it so that you can have the solution very quickly. At the very top, you see uh, the five best ones out of those 12, and then you have a table for a quick overview. And uh, the idea is to just make it quickly navigatable so that people find their solution very quickly. So now let's get to the main ranking factor, uh, content, and um, how to create content that ranks. Those are the steps. Um, you pick a topic that you want to write about, you look at keywords um, which people are actually looking for, you analyze the competitors and uh, you have to decide whether the, you can beat those competitors or not and uh, what are they doing well and what can you do better. Um, you create an outline, a briefing for that uh, content piece so you, you look at which keywords, whether you have to add images, videos, so it's like a guideline for yourself. Um, you create the content and then you publish and you promote the content and many times that won't be enough It takes a while so usually until for competitive keywords to rank it usually until Google changes something with your content It, it can take a few months um, So you wait and if you don't see yourself improving then you um, Then you improve the content so maybe you build another article in that content hub or you try to improve your authority um, and uh, so you try to improve the authority of that content piece because your general authority is how many people link to you and how many people look for you but if you have one strong backlink on that one uh, article that you want to rank then it will increase the authority of that article so authority is not just for your brand or your name it's also for articles so if you have uh, an article that receives a lot of backlinks then you might rank really well for that and for others you might not rank as well because that's the content piece that has the most authority. So let's go through the steps. Uh, first of all, tools. So we use SEMrush, uh, which is a really cool tool. Unfortunately, it starts at $100 a month. And we also use Termlabs, uh, which unfortunately at the moment is only available in German, will be soon in English. It's a really cool content tool, but um, probably not affordable for, uh, for somebody that just does it for one specific project. Um, so what helps is Google suggest um, related searches, uh, YouTube suggests, so if you, if you put in your search term, then Google will suggest things that people have been Googling. And at the bottom, um, at, at the bottom of, the 10, of the 10 best results, you will see other related terms, so people are looking for that. And on YouTube, the same thing. And um, a really cool tool, which is free, is Answer the Public. So if you put in your keyword into that tool, then, you, then it will show you questions that people are um, adding to Google. So it's like, if you put in learn French, then it will say, how do I learn French quickly or something like that? And then you know what to write about because people are actually are looking for an answer to that question and uh, you provide that, that answer. And uh, there's free quick keyword tools, which are quite good as well. Uh, Uber Suggest and Key, uh, Key W Finder are two pretty good uh, tools. Like if you want to do it really professionally, then you probably will need an SEO suite. 
uh, like uh, SEMrush, but those are good to, to just get a general idea about, about keywords and how often do people look for, uh, search for them. So at the top you see uh, SEMrush, and at the bottom you see Ubersuggest, I think. And uh, the steps are, you pick a um, root keyword, like a main keyword, so learn French grammar or something, you put it in, and um, then it shows you related keywords, it shows you um, other keywords that might be interesting, and then you decide, are there enough search, um, are enough people looking for that, and uh, which topics are they looking for, and then you can start uh, writing an article about that. Um, the next step, which is equally important, is to look at what's happening on the first page of Google. So Google knows very, very well what, how, how people interact with content. They have, there's a reason they have the Chrome browser, there's a reason they have Android, uh, the Android OS. They do that so they can see how people interact with Google with everything else. So they know if somebody clicks, they know if somebody stays, and um, so you, okay, something happened there. I got distracted. Oh, sure. All right. My thunder was stolen. So you Google your keyword, and then you see what Google thinks is relevant. Is Google showing a map? Then it's a local search. Is Google showing videos at the very top? then people prefer videos. So if there's videos on the top, it means you have to create a video to rank well. Are there images? So depending on the search term, Google will show different results and whatever happens on Google on the first page, you can, you can understand what people are actually looking for. And um, then you look at the competitor results and you think about what makes those results well. Um, how why are they on the first page? And can you do something that's as good and even better than them? And um, I don't know what I meant with the last point. How long are those? Whatever. Okay. Um, then you create an outline or a briefing. So here I have an example. You can uh, click on that when you download the slides. Um, I created that for a um, for a friend of mine that where we did a barter deal. Um, so, I was, so you see on the right uh, the content checklist and you can see what, are, what the important points are in this um, to, to rank for that keyword, which is Spanish for beginners, uh, which keywords need to be used, which topics need to be covered, how long should the article be. Um, so you usually try to have a longer article than everything that's on, on page one if the search intent is to have more information and uh, what other comp uh, content formats are used. Is it video, is it images, especially in, in the language related industry, it's videos are uh, taken very, very well. And the last step is um, you promote the content. So Google um, wants to see that you that you're not only trying to create content for Google. So you're not just you're creating this content and now you're saying, okay, Google, come to my site and rank it well. Google wants to see that you're actually an authority outside of Google. So the best practice when you create content is to, within the first week or so, to get as many hits as possible on that content piece, because then uh, Google will think, okay, so this is relevant. Um, people are actually coming there outside of, of uh, the search engine. I have to have a, a, a better look at it. And if you get a lot of hits within uh, the first week or so, then you will see your uh, content rise much quicker than if you just put it out there. And uh, you can do that by promoting your um, content on social media, on your own platforms, on newsletter. Um, even ads work well, like Google AdWords or, uh, or Facebook ads or something like that. Or in other channels, uh, in Facebook groups, you could ask people. So now there's about 60 of us. You can exchange business cards and then you can push each other's content uh, to get it ranked better. And um, yeah, the more visitors you get, the more relevant it is. This also is true for a year or two years later. So what, if you publish content and then suddenly there is a spike in, in traffic, then uh, Google will reconsider and will bump you up. So if you, that's why uh, TV ads are also very good, uh, very good to build um, authority because suddenly you have lots and lots of visitors and then Google thinks, okay, this is uh, this company is something is happening, something is important, and they and they rank you better. 
So here are the six, uh, here are the steps again. Um, now we wait and optimize. And uh, remember, optimization is uh, content and online authority. So uh, to optimize, you can create other sub-articles, you can extend the content, you can add a video, you can add a podcast. Um, and uh, sometimes it can take a few months, so don't worry if nothing happens within the first few months. Um, sometimes it can take even half a year or something, but if you drive traffic to your uh, content, it will always increase the speed. And um, always think about what else can you do to improve the content. Because um, what most people do is they create content and they publish it and then they just leave it there. And if it doesn't rank, well, then it doesn't rank. Let's, let's go to the next content piece. But it's much easier to optimize something that you already created than creating something completely new. So if you don't rank well, think about why you don't rank well and try to rank better. And uh, this will take much less work than if you just create another piece, another piece, and another piece. And um, yeah, so if, if the authority is too high, then, then create a content hub. So these are like, if you forget everything that I'm talking about today, remember content and authority are the two main ranking factors for Google. Here is the structure again. Um, this is, this is um, the, the best hack if, if you just can't get on the first page. And this is what we did for, for Spanish, and that's why we keep on, uh, get, we were ranking better and better because we create more and more sub-content to uh, learn Spanish topic. So the second main ranking factor is uh, online authority. And uh, what is online authority? It's the number of backlinks that you have. It's how often do people Google your brand. It's um, how often is your brand mentioned on other websites. So you don't necessarily, uh, backlink is always the best metric, but if, you're, if your brand name is mentioned over many websites, then Google will realize, okay, this is an important brand and it will improve your authority. And um, how often is your content shared on social media? And uh, what's very important as well is how long has the domain been in use? So if you just started a new uh, website, then it will take a long time for you to get uh, the authority for that website. And that's why it doesn't make sense to create lots of different websites for different topics because you're spreading your um, authority over all these sites. So it's better to have one site and to focus all the authority on that site. And um, how do you build online authority? It's very similar to the way you build it offline. Um, it takes a long time. It takes much more time than creating content, so that's why it makes sense to create content to overcome the obstacle of online authority. Um, it can be your brand name or it can be your personal name. So um, depending on what you're trying to achieve, are you trying to be a personal expert uh, or are you trying to improve your brand? And um, it makes a lot of sense to co cooperate with other bloggers, with other YouTubers, because then your name is mentioned over more mediums and uh, Google will increase your authority. And um, backlinks like always work well and uh, yeah, create good content on a constant basis. Uh, this is like the foolproof way of SEO. So if you cr keep on creating content, if you do nothing else, um, this is kind of SEO. So you will have more and more content and you will start ranking better automatically. Uh, I have a few tool tips for you. Um, so the most important uh, tool is um, you need a keyword tool. Um, a really good one is uh, answer the public to get questions and then keyword finder and uh, Uber suggest is a good tool um, to, to, to find keywords and then LSE graph is a good tool to find um, keywords that are around that topic. So you put in learn Spanish and then it will give, give you lots of, uh, con lots of keywords that are uh, relevant or similar to, to that topic. And um, definitely use Google Analytics and the Search Console, a Search Console um, which are two tools that are provided by Google and they will definitely help you um, to improve your rankings. And then there's other stuff, SEO suites, so if you have uh, some uh, money then uh, do SEMrush or Ahrefs. There's many out there and there's many good ones. Um, 
for backlinks, you can use Open Link Profiler. So uh, it's a free tool. You put a website in there, and then you see different um, links that that website has. So for instance, you can put your competitors' sites in there, and then you see um, what backlinks they have, and then you can try to get those backlinks as well. If they're better and they have those links, then it makes sense to see whether you can rebuild their backlinks. Um, it's a link that somebody has from another site onto your site. Um, then browser extension, SEO Quake is really good to have a quick view over um, what's on the first page of Google so you can see the online authority for each search result without actually needing to um, go into inside of the tool. Um, check for broken links. If uh, you have broken links on your website, uh, that's quality. The, the quality of your, of your website decreases because if your website is kind of broken, then Google thinks, okay, you're not, um, you're not maintaining your website well and this decreases the quality factor of your website. Um, page speed, um, it's important that your website loads quickly. Uh, Google PageSpeed and, uh, and Pingdom are two good tools. And um, Yoast is a cool tool to, uh, for WordPress if you're using a WordPress blog um, to do a little bit, to do SEO on that content piece that you're writing about. And um, Screaming Frog is a good crawler, but that's for advanced users. So the essentials are a keyword tool, Google Search Console, and uh, Google Analytics. And on the right, you see the search results with, uh, with SEO Quake. So you can see the, the bars are, the authority, are for the authority of those websites. So if you see huge authority bars for a keyword that you're trying to compete, then it's going to be hard. So uh, if your website doesn't have as much authority, try to compete for keywords where um, other websites are that don't have as much authority. Main takeaways and next steps. So um, the most important SEO factors are content and authority. I keep on repeating that because that's so important. Um, people come to me and they say, oh yeah, I've heard about this new trick um, where I can increase the speed of my website by 0.1 second or um, some other tools and tricks. But the thing is, those are important, but the most important thing is uh, content and authority. So really, make sure you spend most of your time there. Um, it's better to write a few good articles, uh, a few exhaustive articles, than many short and bad articles. Um, text is important, um, but try to mix in other content uh, formats as well. Video is super good for, um, for SEO and the language-related uh, business. Um, yeah, rather than writing 10 different articles, one about learning French, one about learning Spanish, one about learning uh, German, rather write 10 articles about the same topic so that your authority around this topic increases, and uh, which basically is a content hub. Um, promote your content. Don't just write it and then leave it out there. Make sure that you get hits outside of Google. Um, if you don't get the ranking you're wishing for, then... Um, improve the content, it's, it makes much better sense than to start all over. Um, yeah, you can see the, the seventh point is user intent, a search intent, always think about what are people looking for at, uh, when, they, when they're uh, searching for that term. Um, do keyword research, so uh, don't just create content. Um, if you want to rank, then make sure that people are actually uh, looking for that content. One, one article is for one main keyword. So don't try to write about 10 different topics because uh, Google wants to find the best result for that keyword. And uh, you have to make sure that you're only focusing on that topic. So if you write something about uh, French grammar, then make sure that you focus on French grammar and don't get sidetracked. Um, look at your best competitors and um, for that particular keyword and have a look whether you can, um, what are they doing well and what can you do to rank better. Um, internal linking uh, is very good to increase the authority of a content piece. So the best thing to increase the authority of a content piece is by having external links. But the next best thing is to have lots of articles 
in, on your web page on, to link to that content piece you're trying to improve. So why are we keep on improving our Learn Spanish article? It's because all the other articles about learning Spanish are linking to the main article, and so it increases in authority and gets ranked better. Um, Click-through rate is important. Um, so those are things I didn't mention, but those are just a few tips uh, in between. Uh, if people click on your search result, um, then Google thinks it's relevant and they will uh, rank that content better. And uh, keep at it, it takes a long time. Um, it's nothing that comes overnight. So those are the three, uh, 13 main SEO takeaways. Take and I have homework for you because there's a lot of stuff here and when you come home and uh, if you don't decide, if you decide to go for SEO and not for Instagram, um, then I have uh, a little homework for you. Then, um, so this is something you can do in five hours and this is something where you can improve uh, your ranking, which is to, um, to get an article that, you rank, that you're already ranking for and uh, how, how to improve for that. So first of all, um, look at the, look, uh, find a keyword that you're already ranking well for um, like on at the end of page one, on page two or page three, and um, find keywords around the topic. Use Ubersuggest if you have no idea which uh, tool to use. Um, find relevant questions on answer the public and uh, answer those questions if you haven't answered them already. Um, then with these keywords and questions, extend your content by at least 50%. Find um, five to ten related articles that you already have written and link from these articles to that article that you're trying to improve with uh, the right um, anchor text. So the, the text that is linking uh, has to have the keyword inside of it. Uh, improve your uh, meta title and meta description um, so that people are more inclined to click. Um, shoot a video because video is uh, extremely powerful. Um, so shoot a video about that topic, link, uh, upload it on YouTube, link from that YouTube video to your content piece and embed that video on your article and uh, get at least 300 visitors um, to your uh, new article. And you will see if you do these steps, which should take about five hours, you will get for that particular keyword, for that particular content piece, you will improve your ranking. So again, if you forget everything I was talking about today, just remember content and online authority. Those are the two most important points. And now I will show you how to improve your authority live. And I, um, I talked about the slides at the beginning. So instead of giving you the URL where to get the slides, if you Google Netsbekant Influencer <laughs> Summit, you will find the slides on the first on the, on the first place, and you will put in Netsbekant in the Google search result in the Google search, uh, and then it will increase the authority of Netsbekant. That's it. Netsbekant, Maxim Netsbekant, Abadina Dog.